All right. Uh, first of all, uh, remember tonight is the first session of senior seminar presentations from 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. over in the pharmacy building. If you uh, need to review the schedule, or whatever, it's on Slack uh, as well as the room number. Uh, remember, you get 1% extra credit per uh, presentation you attend on your final exam. So I encourage you to attend as many of them as possible to support the seniors that are uh, coming out of the program uh, and make sure you, uh, um, it'll also give you an opportunity to kind of see the types of projects um, that uh, come out of the program. I think all of them this year should be at least reasonable. Every year we usually have uh, some strong ones and we have some really, really weak ones. I don't know if we have too many really weak ones this year. So I think... Uh, I think it'll be pretty decent. Uh, this year? Say this again. Is there, there is no Destiny app? Companion app this year. <coughs> there is a D and D one. Yeah, it's it's going to be pretty pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be really good. There's a machine learning one, and there's. A, there's an app talking to digital signs. Oh, we got all sorts of all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, okay, so um, do we have any homework for today? What was our homework? Attach it to who? Oh, because right now we're just say we're just doing everything locally. So now we need to actually save it to the database in the end, so the save button, right? Okay. Yeah. So uh, dungeons and data structures. That's the builder, right? So, um, and I have my save button on my main screen. So this button, when we click that, it should save. Okay. So. Do I already have a function for that guy? For my save button? Uh, no. Cause this is this is supposed to be the save button. Oh, are we doing just is this for adding a new MPC? That's all we're doing is adding a new MPC. And then, so two things, adding a, new, adding a new NPC to the room and then also saving the thing to the database. Okay. Let me run this real quick. And then we decided today we're going to make NPCs wander. All right. So while that's booting, here in our new NPC activity, we're reading in uh, one piece of information, the NPC's name. And then when we hit the save button, we are, we've already done that. So the NPC should be in the room now, right? But when we come back, the room doesn't display that the NPC is there now. Oh, because we need it to refresh. Right. Got that it. Got it. All right. So we went ahead, I believe, in main activity. Up here, we let um, Core know about the main screen, our main activity, right? Called first screen. And that guy has a function called fill interface, passing it the player's current room. So one thing we can do is we can go ahead and before we leave the new NPC area, we can go ahead and call that guy's fill interface, passing it the room the player's currently in and that will refill it. We could also use one of the um, functions in here on like on restart or something like that to do it. So did I show you this last time where it this this shows up every single time the uh, this this app starts over, the screen starts over. So what we can do is preferred way of doing it. More relevant one in this case. Okay, but they both get called, right? Yeah. Um, let me just check the specifics. 
Well, so here, a couple of things we can do. And what he's talking about here, if we just do a quick search. On Android activity lifecycle. So we have activities already running. We have on pause, on start, on destroy. Let me shrink this a little bit and I'll. Well, actually, it'll be easier to see this way, I guess. User navigates to the activity. Yeah. So on, re on restart would work. On resume returns the activity. That's fine. You can choose your poison, I guess. So if you want to do it on resume... They're just coming in at different points in time. Here, let me. Then we'll go ahead and say this dot fill interface. What are we going to fill it with? Core dot p dot get current room. So that's the current room the player's in, right? So that should allow us to create a NPC in a room where we've added it to that room, told this activity to finish. It then goes back to main activity. It would have called on restart. We're calling on resume. And this will update the interface with any changes that have occurred. It's dying. I'm not getting any output here. Why is it dying? Oh, we have an issue here where I'm trying to get the current room but on resume gets called as uh, part of so on create on start on resume on restart I think on restart is actually the one we really do want here <laughs> on resume breaks it because it's trying to get the players room we haven't left this until we uh, yeah so we're in the wrong part of the this does get called on the very beginning right after on create 
well, on create, then on start, then on restart. Which seems weird that on restart we get called as part of the natural flow of things. Or on resume we get called as part of the natural flow of things. All right. So now we're in this room. If I go ahead and add an NPC, uh, we'll just call him blah. Hit save. Now we see the NPC in this room. All right, so then lastly, we need to have the save button work, right? Because right now, if I run this again in our main room, we will not see that blah. Because we're not actually saving our database. So we're back to the original. All right, and so that's going to be on our main activity screen. And we should have a save button. Oh, that already works. Add NPC, blah, save there, save here. And there's our blah. So we didn't have to write the save button. We wrote that previously. Yeah. Yeah, we did the on, res uh, on restart thing. That was our we wrote this. That was the homework. And we could, uh, in the new, uh, add new NPC activity. Yeah, so if you want on the new NPC activity, instead of doing this, so we'll just comment that out for right now. We go in here before we finish. We can say core dot first screen dot fill interface core dot p dot get current room. Yeah. So one of you were taking advantage of the um, on resume or on restart in our case here. Um, the other one you're taking, you're just doing it at the end of this. So we'll see this work as well. Let me run this. And then I'll ask you which is better and why. So we can start thinking about that for a second. All right, so I'll go ahead and add another NPC here. We'll call this guy Blah2. Save, and there's my Blah2. So in this case, he was, the screen was updated because my add new NPC screen told him to update. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so which is better? Should we do this inside of an on restart or should we do this uh, inside of our NPC or new NPC activity? Okay, why? Well, it's not going to go to Firebase. So when we uh, hit our main activity and we call fill interface, fill interface doesn't hit Firebase. So the difference is, is this on restart, he gets called every single time the screen pops up. Every time. Every time the screen pops up, this guy's getting called anyway. We just put the exact same function here as we did in here. So I'm not sure there's a speed difference. Speed should be identical. Yeah. I think it should be an on restart because whatever you do in the other activities should be just, you know, yeah, add and remove and whatever. But then when you actually got to see the stuff, it should be called that. Okay, so. We have to duplicate this call right now and every function. Yeah. That's it. So every time that we go and we change something, whether we're adding an NPC or, or something else, um, we have to tell our interface to fill itself. Don't we do that inside of add room as well? Uh, where's my new room add room? New room activity. Yep, 
So we're calling that exact same function in here. So as he said, every single time we add something, we are having to call back to our first screen and tell it to fill its interface. As opposed to every single time we return to the original screen, it goes ahead and refreshes its interface, regardless of what's occurred. Does that make sense? So we can avoid having to write this same line multiple times. So I can comment it out of new room. I can comment it out of new NPC. Then make sure inside of main activity, it's not commented out. And now when we go and run this, we can add NPCs and we can add rooms and they both rely on on restart to do it. This is also going to be beneficial to us as we start making our NPCs move around. Because when we make our NPCs move around, we're going to have a situation where uh, an NPC might come into a room um, that you will, maybe you, you're in the room there, you left the room, NPC happened to enter the room while you were gone, you come back, and even though you didn't add anything new, that screen has updated. There's new, new people in there. Does that make sense? So that'll be updated as well. So, well, this goes back to this screen right here where there's this whole life cycle about an activity. So historically, we've always used on create. That's when the thing is first born. The next thing that we get executed automatically is a function called on start. So these are part of the life cycle of an activity. We can decide to interject logic at different points in time there. Then on resume gets called. At that point, the activity is actually running. So this is the last function that gets called on resume is the last function that automatically gets called before the activity is actually running on the screen. When we leave this activity, so when we go to another activity, on pause is called first, and then another activity is launched. When the user returns to this activity, on resume gets called. When we pause and stop this activity, this, is, this activity is no longer visible, the user navigates. So this on pause would happen when you like go back to your home screen. The on stop would happen if you move to another activity within the same application. So you go from on pause to on stop, then we'd move to another activity inside the application. When we start moving back to this activity, the first thing gets called is on restart, then on start, then on resume. So these are just the different points in time we can interject our logic into uh, an activity. Well, on resume didn't go ahead. I was just going to say because it's kind of like looking back on itself a No, it didn't work because our uh, we were calling on resume asking for the player's current room before we had gotten our response from the database. So we didn't have a player and we didn't have his current room. Well, actually, we had a player. We just didn't have his current room yet. So it was a chicken or the egg problem. So we tried to call this function before our, our uh, Firebase function had returned with our database. When does it return to the function? Do you use on resume? On restart. Um, well, I mean, I think any time that a activity is about to restart. So going from one screen to another? Yeah. Because these three, on create, on start, well actually, when we first launch the activity, on create gets called. So this guy only ever gets called one time, on create. On start, on resume, these two functions get called every single time the activity screen is about to show up. That's the very first time, it's also on restarting that activity. So you get to decide, maybe you need something to happen before on start. So maybe you have something, you, you have all three of these functions. So maybe you need to do something in here, then something in here, then something in here, so you have the correct order of operations. Okay? Or you can just write them linearly in here and have them all three happen inside of on resume. So it really depends on the problem you're solving as to where you would put this, uh, the different stuff. Okay, so. Now if I go and, uh, what was I doing here? So I can go and create a exit. 
type in some stuff for a room. Then I can say that exit's gonna be to the west, hit save, I come back, now I have my west exit, so the screen has gone ahead and updated. All right, that makes sense? All right, so now what we wanna do is when we create an NPC, we want this NPC to potentially do some wandering. All right, um, but for starting, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and have the NPC randomly say some stuff. All right. Just so we kind of get that feel for the thread working. All right. Because what we're going to have is we've added this NPC. You know, if we added him to this room, let's say. So we have this NPC blah. We just added. And then I move to the north. I'm in a completely different room here. All right. I want to give that NPC kind of life. So we're gonna have him being controlled by another threat. You know, something where he can decide to do different things. Ultimately, we want him to start wandering around our dungeon with available exits, but we might want him to have kind of this thing where maybe every so often he says something, okay? So, and we'll, for right now, we'll have him print out to the, uh, the screen or print out to Logcat so we can see what he's saying. Just so we know that, oh, I'm in this other room. Yeah, my NPC's doing something. He's doing something else. Okay. So what I'm going to do here. Oh, I need to be in here. Well, let's go and look. We have a, um, a class called thread which implements a uh, which implements a interface called runnable all right so let's go and look at those so we'll look at java thread all right so a thread is, the only thing it inherits from is object and notice that he implements this interface called runnable. And the runnable interface has a single function in it called public void run. So we go inside of runnable, we have one function that we have to implement called run. So anything that implements the interface runnable must have a function called run. All right, that's an important aspect. Now, if we go back to thread, Thread is the magical class, all right? So this guy has some sort of secret sauce that knows how to spin up another Java thread to run simultaneously to something else inside your program, okay? And what it ultimately will do is it will call that run method that it knows is there because thread implements runnable. All right, so for example, if we have this class called prime thread, and we say that this guy extends a thread, which means he is a thread. And since thread implements runnable, if we don't do anything else, he will automatically get a run function that does nothing. But we'll go ahead and write the run function to do some actual stuff. So what he's doing here is I guess they're creating a, uh, here's our constructor for our prime thread. We're passing in a minimum prime setting that guy and then inside here it's just going to keep computing primes so prime numbers numbers that are only even though visible by themselves and one while your program is off doing something else so having a thread allows us to have asynchronous logic inside of our program things that are happening simultaneously so after we've created our npc if we make him a thread and then after we've created him we start him okay it's kind of like winding up a toy Right? We, we place the NPC in the room, we say, go, and then we leave, all right? So we're back in the other room or whatever, and that NPC is now going. He's running in the background, and whatever we wrote inside of that run method is the, the, what he'll do, okay? Now, uh, we can have him say some stuff with some delays, so if I go into uh, thread here, we can tell a thread to sleep, I believe.
So for those of you who've had 450, you notice this join thing we've done in there where you have a, uh, um, the, the main program in C joins a running thread to wait for it to finish. So that's stuff. Um, let's see. Sleep. So we can tell a thread to go to sleep for some number of milliseconds. We can even randomize that. But for right now, why don't we have him say something every like three seconds or something like that? Yeah. Um, is there a way to force a thread to run on a separate physical core? I don't know if there's a way to force it to. I think you can have the Java Virtual Machine enable that feature and then the operating system will schedule it as needed, as you know, whatever makes sense. But I don't think you could say make this run on another core because then you're no longer dealing with threats. Then you really want to spawn off another process in order for that to, to happen. All right, so we're going to go ahead and sleep for like 3,000 milliseconds or something like that, which is will be three seconds. Uh, and then he'll get going. So what we'll do is we're going to go into our NPC here. We're going to augment this guy a little bit. Now, what is interesting to me is whether or not this will break something with Firebase. I don't think so, but let well, I guess we'll we'll, we'll find out. Um, Uh, I'm not worried about the wander because I think we always want him to start back off in his original room. But I think what you're saying is if we hit save and he's in a different room, it'll change the state of the game. Yeah, that's that's definitely a, a true statement. But right now we're not wandering. Let's just talk. I just want to know if, whether we can still save our state of our of our map um, with with uh, a public class NPC that also extends threat whether you can have a extends thread in something that you also know how to store in Firebase. Should it be in like the actual main app, not the builder? Um, probably. Therefore, we're not writing it back. Then we'll know pretty quickly whether or not this guy can, uh, um, because at that point, we're just reading in from the database. We won't be writing back out. Yeah, let's try that, because we really don't need him to wander in here. So in here, he gets his starting room. So that means our NPC inside the main application is actually a little bit different than our NPC in here. If we want an NPC to have a couple of different behaviors, that might be inside of our builder where we can say, you know, this NPC talks every now and then, or this NPC wanders. So that'd be part of our building. Here's his name and this is what he does. Um, so then back in the original, we'll just assume all NPCs do something else. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my builder here. Uh, actually, let me reopen it real quick and then commit the changes so you have the updated changes. Update for adding NPC and updating room. Commit and push. Okay, now I can close this and reopen Dungeons and Data Structures. And what we're going to do inside of here is we're going to augment our NPC a little bit. And we're going to say that this guy extends thread, which means that he now is a thread. And then we're going to give him a function, public void run all right and when we create an npc we can now tell that npc to start we go back to the documentation here up top it probably showed an example of say this again it's a function called start but i wanted to show you how they call it so Threads, I mentioned a few minutes ago, kind of have like the magic sauce for, for creating a thread. So just because it's runnable, having something implement runnable does not make it a thread. Implement runnable just says that this guy must have a function named run. That's all interfaces do. 
they dictate what functions an object that implements them must have. And that's for compatibility across the board. So you think about like the, the example I usually use is like the UPC scanners you have like at grocery stores. You have a zillion different products in the grocery store, but every single one of them is compatible with a UPC scanner because they have, they've implemented the scannable interface or something like that, which means every one of them has implemented the little sticker that's on the side of it that has a UPC code that you can scan. Every product in a grocery score, store has a UPC code on it, right? They've all implemented the scannable interface, let's say. Can you go over again an actual like, example? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do it here. I'm just, I'm just talking about the difference between an interface and other things. All an interface does is it says you must implement these methods. It does not dictate how something works. It just says you have to do something. All right? So in this case, thread happens to implement runnable. So that means every single time you extend something with thread, you are guaranteed to get a method called run. Now that method by default does nothing. So you can choose to override that method and make it do something. But you can write your own class that implements runnable and then all that says is you must write a function called run. How you use that function is up to you. Threads happen to call their run function when you start the thread. So that's this example up here. So they've created this thread here that has a run function that does something. Okay? Then they'll create an instance of that thread, passing it uh, the first prime they want to pass it, and then they tell that thread to start. When they tell it to start, that's when the thread's magic happens. That's nothing that we wrote that has nothing to do with the runnable um, interface other than the knowledge that the start function ultimately will call the run function after it's done the magic of establishing a thread inside the Java virtual machine and all this other stuff. All right, that allows us to have the asynchronous communication, but we're not having to write any of that ourselves. We're just leveraging this existing object called a thread, putting what we want to happen inside of run and then telling the thread to start. And then it goes and does its thing. So you don't go actually calling run yourself. Correct, start calls run. This is how we'll use a thread. Just like that. All right, but we're gonna make our MPC a thread. So after we've added them to the room, we can then tell that MPC to start, which will then call whatever logics inside of his run. So here's my MPC. I made him a thread. I'm gonna write run. And for right now, we'll just say while true. So he does this forever. We'll go ahead and tell this guy to sleep. So let's have him sleep for three seconds, say something, sleep for three seconds, say something, so on and so forth. So we'll say this dot um, sleep, 3,000 milliseconds. That's three seconds. And it looks like this has to be in a try catch maybe. Yep, unhandled exception. So we will try to go to sleep. And we will catch exception E and do nothing. Just because we're lazy. Um, so we'll try to go to sleep after we wake up after three. So, so this line blocks. All right, that's a synchronous line. It blocks us. We pause there for three seconds. But it's a blocking line inside of an asynchronous thread. So this NPC is over here doing his own thing while we're creating new rooms, creating exits, whatever it is over here. This guy is now paused for three seconds while we're still doing our own thing. And after three seconds, he wakes up and does his own thing again while we're still operating over here. So that's the asynchronous portion of this is this guy over there doing his own thing. The, syn the uh, synchronous is us over here and the synchronous is the uh, sleep inside of the thread. Yep. No, we have it in our Dungeons and Data Structures now. That way, uh, and that's kind of what he brought up. Maybe in our builder, when we create an NPC, if we want to have a couple of different behaviors, maybe we have the behavior where the guy just babbles, 
every so often. And then we have another behavior where he wanders. In our builder, we might, when we build an NPC, instead of just giving him a name, we might choose between which of the two behaviors we want him to have. Or maybe both. Maybe he can babble and, <laughs> and wander. But then in the actual game is where he would actually play out those things. So we're building this in the game. So our NPC in our game is actually a little bit different than our NPC is in our builder because this guy actually needs to be a thread. So we'll have him sleep for three seconds. Uh, then we'll just go ahead and do a system.out.println. Let's put a couple of asterisks in here. NPC says, um, actually we can say this.name. Ah, uh, we could use format, but I didn't. You want to use format? Okay, so we'll say NPC percent S says Percent S, and this will be this dot name. And then we'll just have him say woot. That's what he'll actually say. So percent S is a placeholder for a string. This dot name will fill in this percent S. Woot will fill in this percent S. Those things. Yep. So that's similar to printf in uh, C. Okay. So that's our MPC. And that's going to happen forever. Oh, that's going to, that's unfortunate. Now we have to name this differently because there's already a get name inside of thread that is uh, set up as final. So we can't overwrite it. Now this is just our getter. So this is for us. So I should be able to refactor this. I'll change the name of it. All right, so I'm not changing the base method. But that's the thread. I'm changing the current method. And I'm going to name this uh, get name of NPC. Hmm, he should be happier now. Although he doesn't act much happier. force another build, I guess. Um, okay, so we've adapted our MPC to now, and let's just see here if they did show up. Uh, they did. So our MPC showed up in there, so at the very least it seems like they didn't break. Um, but now what we need to do is we need to, when, they, when we put an MPC in a room, we need to tell that MPC to start. Because NPCs are threads now, okay? At what point do we know we're adding an NPC to a room? What would be the what would be the best place for us to tell that NPC to start? In the room we create. So when we have in room, we have an add NPC. Is that up here? Down here. Here's our add NPC. So this is the NPC that we're adding is temp. So after we've added him to the room, 
and we can set his current room index, we can say temp.start. That'll spin up that, uh, uh, that MPC and have him start doing his thing. Okay, so this line right here starts the MPC thread. We'll just say to run asynchronously, async. So doing nothing else now, all of our NPCs act the same. They all say woot every three seconds. In this case, we have at least three NPCs. I don't remember if we put one in a different room. So we should get several woots out to, out to the screen. Every three seconds. No, it's every three seconds because it's in an infinite loop. We look at NPC here. Every one of our NPCs, when they start, it creates a thread, then it calls run. So every single one of these guys will say, while true, but we'll see a different name. So it'll say, blah says woot, and so-and-so says woot, and that kind of stuff. So we'll go ahead and run this now. Didn't like something. Didn't I change that? Well, here, let's do this. We'll get get MPC name. I refactored it before to show me where the errors were, um, but it tells me I never actually used it. So we should be okay. But if you don't refactor it and you change it, then you'll just have errors in the other places where you used it. You can just go and fix them there. All right, so this guy's running. Let's go to Logcat. Should show up in Logcat, shouldn't it? Unless threads don't have access to it. What? Oh, that's right. But it still seems clear that it's not printing it there, so I could print it a different way. Actually, formats that right. We can do print F. This format doesn't actually give us, doesn't display it. System.out.printf, just like you can see, will actually display it. All right, so this guy is cooking. So, what did you say? It still didn't work, but I think it's because threads don't have access to system.out.printf uh, or even print lin. Let's try a print lin real quick. But there is a console.log we can use instead that should write out to it. That system.out.print lin used to not work to log cat. That was something they added as a convenience.
Yep, so it looks like threads don't have access to that guy. That's okay. So we will say, I think it's console dot. You have to give it like a tag and uh, yeah, I think that is something related to, I think it is log something. Yeah, this is for verbose. <laughs> Wonder what that's for. I guess that's what you read. When things are just broken. <laughs> So we'll tag this as a says, and then the message we'll put in there is just woot for right now. Then we can doctor it to uh, put a couple asterisks in front of the says. And if this doesn't work, we can always throw a toast up there just to prove it's happening. Because this is less about a logic break and more about who has access to the uh, um, who has access to the log cat. Don't see it there. Can we see what threads are running? Uh, I don't know. We should be able to prove that that thread started up here in room. So we'll print out before thread start. And we can print out after thread start, proving we got past that line. And this is in the maiden thread, so that guy should have access to the log file. Never actually calling this function. We would call this function, but since our rooms are getting built with uh, with the database, it's not actually calling this guy. So what we would need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the way Firebase works is he sets the public so he gets the npcs up here and he just sets this array list equal to it he doesn't add them one by one using our function no because you well you you could but you need a way to tell a room to start to start all of his NPCs. So what we need to do is this. So we're gonna take it out of here. 
because our room knows about all of his NPCs, right? So we're just going to create a public function and we're going to exclude it. Actually, we didn't need to exclude those, did we? So that's okay. So we're going to have a public function, public void start MPC threads. And what this guy will do is he'll go through every one of the NPCs. So for MPC, MPC in this dot NPCs, npc.start so he'll spin up all of our threads and we'll do that for each of our rooms so we'll tell each room to start his npc thread and where will we do that inside of our main activity after our callback from firebase here's our on data changed we went ahead and filled our room that we can go ahead and say, and this is for our dungeon. So in our dungeon, we're also gonna create a public void start NPCs. And he's gonna go through all of the rooms, telling each room to start all of your NPCs. start NPC threads in here too. All right, so the dungeon knows how to start NPC threads and how does he do it? He goes through all of his rooms telling each of his rooms to start their NPC threads. What does a room do? A room knows how to start his NPC threads by going through all of his NPCs and telling each one to start. So then here in main activity, this is after this line right here, that's when we actually have our dungeon. Well, actually, it's after this line right here is when we actually have our dungeon. So then we can say main activity pointer CS department, or we could say core dot the dungeon means the same thing. Dot start npc threads and that should get them all started which then means here in npc i believe this guy should work again because he was never getting called before Just in case this guy, printf doesn't work with log, let's just do a system.out.println woot. And that's entirely possible that printf doesn't work with log because println was added to work with log at a later point in time. Yep, there's a bunch of woots. All right, so then we can build our string the right way here. Uh, we actually could probably do this. String.format. This guy. and then pass that into printlet.
So then we're using println to print, but we're printing a formatted string. I think that should work. NPC null says, is he not getting his name set? Well, it should be his public. Uh, Oh, unless, no, this name should be the most local version of this because when we tell a, let's look at, fill interface here and see where we get our NPC names from. We're calling get name there, which should give us the name of the. That's interesting. So this is our NPC. We're calling his get name function. And the get name function for an NPC. Should be called get NPC name. And if we change it in here to get NPC name, it's going to give us a bunch of nulls. Yeah, it gives us a bunch of null values. Why does get name? I know. Well, it does exist because it came from thread. Thread has a final get name. So now they're back, which means I should be able to say. this dot get name here and now it should work but the question is is why is it working yeah. so there's our guys talking Has to be something to do with that private method called get name, or a final method rather called get name that accesses threads name variable, which I'm assuming is then private. Yet when we set, what does a thread have? Why does a thread have a name? Um, I think it's probably the process or the thread ID for it in the for the uh, thread management, like the equivalent of process management for threads. But why does Git name? If this is the name of our NPC, it seems like this guy's never getting set. So if I copy that out. Get rid of it there. Get rid of it there. Get rid of it there. Actually, I just need to do something like that there. If 
it works currently, that means that thread is providing a public string name that must be final, therefore we can't override it. So this guy must be being ignored. Yeah. So we're hijacking a variable called uh, public string name, but that variable inside of thread is public final string name. We should see it documented out here. Under fields. Those are all static. We can create a thread with a name. So it doesn't actually have a field called name. It must have, this must have to do something with the thread's special sauce how it handles its name. And because we don't have access to that and it's not a public field, we must just have a side effect of being able to set it publicly. That's very interesting. So our real downside here is we didn't, we called this guy name. If we called it NPC name or something like that, all of our other things would work. But the issue right now is in our database it's called name. So we'd have to recreate the department in our database. Um, well, actually, no, we can do this. We can say public string NPC name like this. Well, that might take more time than I want to spend. Let's just comment it out. All right, so right now these guys, for right now let's just presume that this works for a magical reason because threads have this special string called name that for some reason Firebase is able to hijack and overwrite the name of the thread with our NPC name, but we can't do it directly. Not sure why that is. Um, but in any case, we're going to go ahead and um, let's randomize the amount of time it takes for it to say something. All right. So we want a number between what? One second and 10 seconds, something like that. So we'll go inside of our NPC. Oh, I'm already there. In fact, I'm already exactly where I want to be. And rather than sleeping for 3,000 milliseconds, we'll go ahead and say random r is equal to new random. All right. And then we're going to sleep for r dot next int. And we're going to pass it. We want it to be between one second and 10 seconds. So let's say 10,000 plus 1,000, because that would give us between zero and 9,999. Uh, and it's actually not, yeah, it'll be next in. And then we'll add 1,000 to it for adding one second to whatever it is. So the minimum we'd have is one one second or 1,000 milliseconds. So now our guys should be on a little bit different cadence and they'll sleep a different amount of time each time. So they shouldn't all spit it out at the same time here. So there's our LOL said woot. These guys were on a similar path there. Coming in at different different rates. Okay. So now what we want to do if 
for our homework, for our last homework, we want to make our NPCs wander from room to room at random intervals and make sure to update the visible interface for the player so they immediately see an NPC walk in. You should have NPCs randomly select a valid exit from the room they are currently in. That make sense? Should not be very difficult. Just going to have you review how do we find our room, how do we look at the available exits, how do we make an NPC take an exit. Okay? So let me go ahead and commit this. Plus NPC threads with random chatter. And remember, this is not our builder. This is our original. All right, questions, comments, concerns, bribes. All right, I'll see everybody on Thursday. We'll go over this and we will talk about the final exam. Uh, one thing I will, one thing just real quick, um, your final exam, um, because I'm going to just be coming back from my conference in Alabama that day, I'm actually going to make it uh, an online timed thing, so you'll be able to do it whenever you start it, you'll have a certain amount of time to finish it, but you won't have to come to class to take it, it'll be a completely online thing, so find your nice quiet place and stuff like that. I'll give you plenty of extra time in case there's weird stuff with Blackboard. It shouldn't be a time commitment thing. But we'll talk about that more on Thursday. Just a heads up that you don't have to make, you don't have to take it exactly during our class time if you don't want to. All right.